what is happening in Israel is so gut-wrenching. And um, if you're like me, you've come here tonight with just a seriously heavy heart about all these atrocities that we are hearing about and seeing and some of the things that for uh, purposes of uh, trying to be modest, they're even blurring out on your televisions so that you don't have to see the worst of the worst. But with each day that unfolds since Hamas waged this terrorist attack against Israel, we're learning more and more and more, which is even more cruel than the day before. I don't even want to list out all the cruelties because it's so hard to hear that um, it, it's better left unsaid, and I'm sure you've been hearing about it in the news as I have anyway. Hamas is a terrorist organization. They are named Hamas, it's an acronym in, um, in Arabic that stands for, the, in English it translates, Islamic Resistance Movement. Hamas is intent on wiping Israel off the map. To in any way support them or think that anything that they are doing is commendable is to be a party to the evil that is behind them. Hamas is operating like any anti-Semitic thought or action under the power of Satan himself. Satan is the one who incites people to hate the Jews. And why does he do that? Because God determined to rescue the world through a plan of redemption. And in order to do that, God providentially raised up a race of people, a nation that had previously never existed through the seed of one man whose name was Abraham. And out of that man's seed came a race of people that ultimately formed a nation of people that ultimately were given by God's providential design boundaries for land through which, here's the purpose why God raised up this nation and race of people, because ultimately he wanted to present a Messiah, a savior for the whole world through this race of people. So therefore, Revelation 12, 4 tells us that the dragon has always stood against the woman ready to devour her child. What does that mean? Well, the dragon in Revelation 12 is a word for Satan. And the woman in Revelation 12, 4 is a picture of Israel. And the child that the woman has given birth to is ultimately a picture of Jesus, the Messiah. So therefore, the dragon has always stood ready to devour the child that the woman gave birth. Satan has always been opposed to God's redemptive plan. And since God's redemptive plan came through the Jewish people because of a Messiah named Jesus, therefore, the whole world's attention has been pointed towards this little tiny nation smaller than the state of New Jersey. And there has been this continual effort to wipe out the Jewish people and to wipe out the state of Israel, but it is all really because Satan is inciting people and nations to come against God's redemptive plan. That's what it comes down to. Um, I, you know, take this personally because when you start talking about Israel, you're talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the people whom he loves and a nation that he founded for a redemptive purpose for the sake of the world. And so, um, you know, Israel is Bible. Um, we as Christians are thankful for what God has done through the Jewish people because here we are, you know, part of the recipients of his redemptive plan that he revealed through, through the Jewish people, in particular through a Jewish savior, his name is Jesus, who died for the sins of the whole world. And so, you know, on a personal level, I got friends in Israel. I've been, I've been taking groups from our church for 25 years to Israel. Um, this week I've talked to friends in Nazareth, Bethlehem, and Jerusalem. I've heard from two um, officers in the Israeli Defense Force, one of whom you're gonna hear from tonight by way of video. And um, it's brutal. 
It is absolutely brutal. And so I just want to say unequivocally, for whatever it's worth, not that the world is watching what we think at Cornerstone Chapel in particular, but we stand with Israel and the Jewish people. And, and let me say this too, we stand with any Palestinians who condemn Hamas and also believe in Israel's right to exist. We stand with, the, with those who would say that too. I also want to say I am grateful for the stance that President Biden has taken. And even today, after a roundtable discussion with some leaders, um, he, he said, quote, the act of Hamas was, quote, an act of sheer evil. Uh, he also said today, quote, it is the deadliest day for Jews since the Holocaust, end quote. And America is showing their moral support. And, you know, we've, we've taken the USS Gerald Ford into the Eastern Mediterranean, so we are poised to be ready. We've delivered B-2 bombers. We have released uh, additional munition so that the, the dome um, uh, protective uh, missiles that get fired um, in order to try to come against these rockets that are coming over from Hamas, now more than like 6,000. The dome defense system is about 95% uh, accurate. So um, we've released, the United States has released more munition that we had there in Israel, given it to the Israelis so that they can uh, use the, the missiles for the dome protective um, um, process to, to be able to protect themselves. So we're doing the right things. And when somebody says or does the right thing, they should be honored for that. So I, I honor our president for that. I, I pray that uh, we continue to stand behind Israel. I pray that um, we will continue to support them in every way that they need because it's going to get uh, uglier, it's going to get worse. As I said on Sunday, um, they're going to go in and Gaza is going to be pretty much leveled because of trying to weed out Hamas. This is going to be Israel's uh, last attempt really to try to weed out uh, the evil that Hamas is. But we have much to pray for because as I said on Sunday too, Hezbollah to the north part of Israel, which is the southern part of Lebanon, they sh Lebanon and uh, Israel share a border. Hezbollah has over 100,000 Katusha rockets, also financed and supplied by Iran. And Hezbollah is more aligned with Iran than even Hamas is, because Hezbollah are Shiites like Iran, um, and Hamas is Sunni, but they come together for the sake of trying to destroy Israel. And so we gotta, we gotta continue to pray because there's a lot going on on all fronts. And I just uh, received a text uh, before coming out here tonight, so I'll read the headline. Hamas leader and founding member Khaled Mashal calls for global Muslim uprising this Friday. So that's what's happening in our world today. And again, why all over this? Let me uh, show you a brief a video, this is put out by Dennis Prager, Prager U. It's a five minute video, but I think it really summarizes why the conflict. So guys, if you could go ahead and show this short video. When I did my graduate studies at the Middle East Institute at Columbia University's School of International Affairs, I took many courses on the question of the Middle East conflict. Semester after semester, we studied the Middle East conflict as if it was the most complex conflict in the world, when in fact, it is probably the easiest conflict in the world to explain. It may be the hardest to solve, but it is the easiest to explain. In a nutshell, it's this. One side wants the other side dead. Israel wants to exist as a Jewish state and to live in peace. Israel also recognizes the right of Palestinians to have their own state and to live in peace. The problem, however, is that most Palestinians and many other Muslims and Arabs do not recognize the right of the Jewish state of Israel to exist. This has been true since 1947, when the United Nations voted to divide the land called Palestine into a Jewish state and an Arab state. The Jews accepted the United Nations partition 
but no Arab or any other Muslim country accepted it. When British rule ended on May 15, 1948, the armies of all the neighboring Arab states, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Transjordan, and Egypt, attacked the one-day-old state of Israel in order to destroy it. But to the world's surprise, the little Jewish state survived. Then it happened again. In 1967, the dictator of Egypt, Gamal Abdel Nasser, announced his plan, in his words, to destroy Israel. He placed Egyptian troops on Israel's border, and armies of surrounding Arab countries were also mobilized to attack. However, Israel preemptively attacked Egypt and Syria. Israel did not attack Jordan and begged Jordan's king not to join the war. But he did. And only because of that did Israel take control of Jordanian land, specifically the West Bank of the Jordan River. Shortly after the war, the Arab states went to Khartoum, Sudan, and announced their famous three no's. No recognition, no peace, and no negotiations. What was Israel supposed to do? Well, one thing Israel did a little more than a decade later in 1978 was to give the entire Sinai Peninsula, an area of land bigger than Israel itself and with oil, back to Egypt because Egypt, under new leadership, signed a peace agreement with Israel. So Israel gave land for the promise of peace with Egypt, and it has always been willing to do the same thing with the Palestinians. All the Palestinians have ever had to do is recognize Israel as a Jewish state and promise to live in peace with it. But when Israel has proposed trading land for peace, as it did in 2000, when it agreed to give the Palestinians a sovereign state in more than 95% of the West Bank and all of Gaza, the Palestinian leadership rejected the offer and instead responded by sending waves of suicide terrorists into Israel. Meanwhile, Palestinian radio, television, and school curricula remain filled with glorification of terrorists, demonization of Jews, and the daily repeated message that Israel should cease to exist. So it's not hard to explain the Middle East dispute. One side wants the other dead. The motto of Hamas, the Palestinian rulers of Gaza, is, we love death as much as the Jews love life. There are 22 Arab states in the world, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Indian Ocean. There is one Jewish state in the world, and it is about the size of New Jersey. In fact, tiny El Salvador is larger than Israel. Finally, think about these two questions. If tomorrow Israel laid down its arms and announced, we will fight no more, what would happen? And if the Arab countries around Israel laid down their arms and announced, we will fight no more, what would happen? In the first case, there would be an immediate destruction of the state of Israel and mass murder of its Jewish population. In the second case, there would be peace the next day. As I said at the outset, it is a simple problem to describe. One side wants the other dead. And if it didn't, there would be peace. Please remember this. There has never been a state in the geographic area known as Palestine that was not Jewish. Israel is the third Jewish state to exist in that area. There was never an Arab state, never a Palestinian state, never a Muslim or any other state. That's the issue. Why can't the one Jewish state the size of El Salvador be allowed to exist? That is the Middle East problem. I'm Dennis Prager. About uh, two years ago, I showed that video clip to two Muslim friends of mine. And they watched it with me and they said, we don't like what he says, but we can't factually argue against it. I want to read Psalm chapter 10. Terry and I yesterday when we were having devotions together, and it was the 10th of the month, so we were reading Psalm 10. And this psalm is subtitled, A Song of Confidence in God's Triumph Over Evil. So we thought it was very timely as we read it. 
It's only 18 verses. You can follow along or listen. Psalm 10. Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride persecutes the poor. Let them be caught in the plots which they have devised. For the wicked boast of his heart's desire. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. His mouth, talking about the enemies of Israel, his mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. He sits in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places, he murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws him into his net. He crouches, he lies low, that the helpless may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face, he will never see. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? He has said in his heart, you will not require an account, but you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief to repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear, to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. May God's justice be done. So, on Monday, I called my friend Amir Sarfati, who uh, I've known for about 20 years. And Amir was a major in the Israeli Defense Force. He's, and then he went into the reserves, and, and, uh, but now he's aged out, so they didn't call him up. But um, I called him, I said, give me your perspective on all of this. Um, he was also the deputy governor of Jericho before the Israelis turned the city of Jericho over the Palestinians, and I forget the year that that happened, 1994, I believe it was. Um, so Amir, and, and now Amir um, grew up in a pretty strict Jewish home, but he, but he came to know Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior, very um, well equipped in Bible prophecy, he goes around the world really talking about scripture and Jesus and Bible prophecy. Anyhow, I, I call up Amir, and I said, can you do a video, a Zoom with me, because I want to ask you some questions. I happened to catch him in New York. He was here in the States when all this broke out. I just texted him about two hours ago, and he, and he managed to get back to Israel. But um, So this Zoom recording I'm about to show you is not like, it's not like studio quality. He was in a hotel in New York, and I was in a hotel actually in Pennsylvania, but we connected. This is about 20 minutes, I got his perspective, so I just wanna share this video clip with you, then I'll come back up, and then we'll have a time of prayer together. So this is our Amir Sarfati. Go ahead and play the video, guys. So I'm here with my good friend, Amir Sarfati. Amir, I've probably known you for now close to 20 years, I guess, um, thereabouts, and um, no better person I can think of to talk to about what is going on in Israel than you, my friend. Uh, you are a, a retired now from the IDF, but you were a major in the reserves. And um, I was talking to you before we uh, pressed record that you've just barely passed an age where they're not going to call you up. But you were telling me 400,000 reservists they've called up now, the largest uh, calling up of the reserves in the history of Israel. So 
Um, first of all, welcome. And second of all, give me your perspective. Give us your perspective on what is happening right now in Israel. And then I want to weave it in with Bible prophecy too, but tell me just what's happening factually. You know some things going on there, so tell us. So, you know, it, it's kind of hard to uh, admit, but uh, that was one of Israel's most colossal failures when it comes to intelligence that led to a colossal failure in readiness. Um, and Israel underestimated its enemy and overestimated its intelligence. And we got a wake-up call uh, that cost us dearly. It's the 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 probably the most uh, you know the largest terror attack in the history of the Jewish people. I mean, in one day, uh, more than a thousand people were killed. Uh, I mean, they tell you it's 900 or 800, but there are hundreds of bodies that we're finding right now when we finally uh, clear the, the kibbutzim and, and the places where uh, we have no control over until a few hours ago. So we're finding tons of bodies in homes, uh, whole families, uh, children, women, uh, old people, young people. They they executed people ISIS style. And so, um, yeah, so what happened is basically um, Israel declared war. Uh, and, and, and basically, uh, we have um, um, we are enacting Article 40, which uh, the last time it was, uh, it was in 1973 in the Yom Kippur War, exactly 50 years ago. Um, the first step is to purify the Israeli territory from all the remaining of the terrorists. We're talking about almost 1,500 terrorists that infiltrated into Israel. Uh, and then we began phase two, which is the uh, demolition of every possible hideout of the terrorists in Gaza. They've never seen anything like that, they said, in their history. And uh, Israel literally took off the gloves and decided to uh, go all the way. Number three is also to um, uh, get international support. And if, if you follow me on Telegram, you see on uh, you know, unprecedented support to Israel while Israel is bombing. Normally, you know, that's when the support ends. And uh, of course, Israel will have to deal also with our other borders in the north, in the northeast, Syria and Lebanon, which are also troublesome because the Iranian proxies uh, received the green light from Iran to also start their thing from there. And so this is where we are right now. We're in the middle of a war. It's the third day only, and we expect it to last weeks. And um, the U.S. Uh, is standing by Israel in a very beautiful and unique way, just as it did 50 years ago. This time, uh, USS Gerald Ford uh, is approaching the coast of Israel. B-52 bombers are uh, landing in Israel and uh, lots of munition and uh, uh, special weapons and special bombs are on their way on cargo planes to Israel. But what are your what are your feelings about how it is true President Biden came out with a pretty strong statement in defense of Israel but at the same time, our U.S. policy towards Iran is not helping Israel. It's helping Hamas. Um, the the uh, the sanctions have been lifted and billions of dollars now are available to Iran. The Iran nuclear deal is a disaster. Uh, anything that we're doing to Ira to to aid or assist Iran and Iran is calling for death to Israel, death to America. So. There's a conflict in the United States about how we're really helping or not helping Israel. Wouldn't you agree? No, I, I agree with you that uh, Israel itself does not understand exactly what is the stance of the U.S. administration, because obviously unfreezing uh, $6 billion would mean that Hamas gets a half a billion out of it. Um, also, by the way, in your southern border, on one hand, they kept the border open and finally, suddenly, they, they decide that it's time to, um, you know, build a wall or whatever it is. So you can yeah. tell that they, they understand things are not working the way they had hoped. Um, look, I could say a lot of things about the horrific U.S. Uh, um, foreign uh, policy in the last two and a half years. 
I mean, everything from Afghanistan through uh, what's going on in Iraq and Syria uh, to the uh, issues with Iran and your borders. But but I will choose now to focus on the stand by Israel the, because that's a game changer. I, I don't know if you know, but uh, this is why we don't have the uh, Hezbollah attacking right now with uh, 250,000 rockets. This is why the Houthis in Yemen are not doing anything or the proxies of Iran in Iraq and Syria, only because they understand that they're messing with more than just Israel. Yeah. Uh, but these things will change, and I'm sure that we're going to talk about it now, uh, because prophetically, America will not stand there forever. Before we talk about prophecy, tell me, what is your thoughts about, do you, and obviously, you know, this is, I guess, speculative, but the border with Gaza is typically very secure. And, and when we say there was an intelligence failure, but isn't it likely that either Russia, China, Iran, somebody is tampering with the surveilling process around the border with Gaza for Hamas to break through the border and and do what they did to come in and butcher Jews like they did? Yeah. Well, well, you know what? They first of all they prepared for this for a whole year, actually yeah. a little bit more than a year. So this is. You know, while the world was telling us that we need to help Hamas, support Hamas, get more workers to come to work in Israel, they were already plotting this. Yeah. Now, the thing is that the colossal failure of the Israeli intelligence is not only that we didn't know about this operation, but we also did not know that they are holding certain things that now we know they have, such as sophisticated drones that are dropping bombs uh, in a very accurate way, because what they just did is they neutralize all 25 outposts along the border with those bombs. And, and they also neutralize with sn snipers, basically, uh, shot all the cameras. Uh, so, you know, with the first 20 minutes, we were blind. We didn't see what's going on there. And then once they open 15 different holes in the in the fence 15 not one not two 15 places along the for the fence they were quickly going to the israeli outpost and they slaughtered all the soldiers there yeah. while they were in bed yeah. so what happened is that in the first hour israeli the israeli military in in the upper levels of command had no clue what went on down there because our eyes and our ears were gone our command ch chain was missing the link that is on the ground. And so these terrorists surprised the music festival uh, participants. They surprised, they surprised the towns and villages in Kibbutzim. They just showed up and people had no clue it's happening. And um, uninterruptedly in the first couple hours, they would go in and out, in and out. And they were shocked. They admitted, they said, we were shocked that... Israel did not react for nearly four hours, allowing us to go in and bring kidnap people into Gaza, go back with the same trucks, same motorcycles, same jeeps, get more people back and forth a few times. They, It was like, it's too good to be true, because it was too good to be true. They did surprise us. It was a colossal failure in but, levels that uh, we will have to study. But they had to have had help. I mean, I mean absolutely. Look, I know I in my newsletter a couple of days ago, I I, I hinted that uh, Russia's hands is, is all over this place. Yeah. Iran, of course, is very vocal and supporting in whatever they can. But it had to be a bit higher than that. It had to have a capability that is even more than Iran. And, and you see those drones that are dropping bombs. In Ukraine, you see that uh, all, yeah. all all over there. You know, Iran is making suicide drones for the most part, or drones that are going long distance with big missiles, not just the little ones that are dropping bombs. That's a Russian thing that apparently we learned that the Wagner group was training the Hamas people how to operate. Um, so I see Russia's fingerprint all over because Russia is interested in having another conflict that will divert the attention of the world from what's going on. Well, um, and and so speaking of Russia, let's talk a little bit about prophecy because Ezekiel 38, I mean, things are correct. coming together in a way like we've never seen it. I mean, 
Russia's alliance with Iran and uh, you know Persia in in uh, in Ezekiel chapter thirty eight, but but Iran was called Persia until nineteen thirty five. So, talk a little bit about what's your perspective on what is unraveling prophetically here. Yeah, well, so you know one of the reasons this conflict right now it cannot be the Ezekiel war is obviously the fact that Israel is getting help from someone yeah. which in Ezekiel we know nobody's going to stand on our side but the two things that should happen for Ezekiel to really come to 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 pa- to to fruition is is the Damascus destruction and the fact that America must step down from its role as world leader as as in the best friend and ally of Israel and that will leave Israel vulnerable and ready for the Russians to come another thing that is I see that is happening right now is Russia is very angry with the Western world's support of Israel right now they're, they're very angry they it reminds them of what the world is uh, with Ukraine and so they find themselves on the other side and so more and more the Russians uh, are, are are actually finding themselves in uh, on a on a clear path of confrontation with Israel and uh, again America is right now standing on our side but uh, you know and I know that this is the key to how the Russians will feel free to come against us is when they know that there is no U.S. on our side. There is no Gerald Ford uh, right uh, in our coast, and there is no B-52s that are parked on our runway. So, so I think that um, if I would be, if I was an American, I would, you know, I would think, okay, I think we're next because, uh, you know, it seems to me that um, if there is one thing that all the big forces of evil and the axis of evil wants to do right now is bring you down. And, and then they'll come and take care of us. And all your open borders, it's innocent to think that only work seekers are there crossing yeah. the border. Your military is very concerned about the identity of many that infiltrated into your through your southern borders. And all they need is to wait for the day that they're being called to do what they need to do. And a lot of what you saw that happened to us can happen on American soil because once they're enacted as sleeper cells and once they're enacted, they get their weapon that it's easy to get in America and they'll just show up in neighborhoods and towns, take over them, and that's it. So what yeah. happened to Israel can happen in many other places. I just heard today that 153, they've identified 153 terrorists that have come across the southern border and we don't know where they are. They're in the United go. States now somewhere, and so they can easily arm themselves. Uh, I just also spoke directly with a man who was down on the border a couple months ago, and he said he saw buses pulling in that was that were crossing the border, and, and everyone on the bus were uh, fighting age Chinese men. And oh. like, how are they coming through Mexico? But he said that's, that's who was getting off the bus. So... It's really interesting what is happening right now. What about Damascus? What do you think they, what role do they play in any of this? Well, you know, Dam- Damascus will will have to be destroyed. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us who destroys it. The Bible tells us it will cease from being a city. It will be a ruinous heap, which means something very big is going to happen and it, Damascus can be destroyed. Uh, it can be a, a destruction caused by man. It can be natural disaster because you know you don't know but we know one thing the fingers will be pointed at israel no matter what and and that will be enough for for them to conclude that it's time to go against us and so you know i i see how the arab world is getting crazy when israel is doing something to arabs but as long as it's the palestinians they don't care much but when we or when we will be accused for doing something to syria and to the Syrian capital, even though we, it's not necessarily us who did something, but it doesn't matter. It, what matters is what they think. Yeah. Um, it's going to be then, I believe, the end of their tolerance and they'll just roll into us. I honestly believe that, you know, very soon, and when I say soon, I don't know if days, weeks, or months, but I'm, I'm just saying we're getting to that level. The temperature is you know, so hot, it's boiling, and the Middle East is just about to explode. And um, people are becoming very, very 
you know, polarized. I mean, it's it's the Israeli society right now, by the way. One good thing that happened is that we're we're now one and people understand that, you know, we need to put an end to Hamas in Gaza. It's not no, nothing less than that can be uh, tolerated. So I, I think that um, when you, when that happens, you get uh, you, you get extreme measures that are going to be taken by all countries around. Yeah, I know. I've already warned our congregation: get ready for the international backlash. Now they're going to see Israel as Absolutely. the aggressor. Absolutely. I mean, you know, the Arab world already sees Israel as the occupiers, and it'll just feed that. But I mean, this is a matter of survival. Uh, what Israel absolutely, has to do. and I think that the Israelis are at the point where they're no longer they don't no they no longer care what the world will say. And after losing that many people in such a way, we're done with you know what the UN or what the world is saying. Well, Psalm 121, he who watches over Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And um, that's the ultimate comfort that uh, that Israel has. And so, Amir, just as we wrap things up, um, you know, Psalm 122 is our mandate to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. What what can we as Americans do? Anything besides praying? What how can we help what's going on right now in Israel? Well, on my Telegram channel, where I feed news around the clock, I mean, I intend to post uh, in you know a few hours or maybe tomorrow, because I you know there's a lot of people that are asking for help, but I don't I I don't like to to post stuff that I don't verify. Yeah. Um. So I'm going to collect uh, uh, you know verified uh, uh you know places where people should. Uh, or can uh, help. There's okay. a lot of need. A lot of need. I mean, we're talking about communities that were that are gone, basically. Yeah. The kibbutz yeah. that had 300 people, of which 100 dead and 50 yeah. are in Gaza right now, and people lost their homes and people lost everything. So there's a lot of need. Um, I'm on my Telegram channel. I'm going to post some, maybe on, on on social media as well. But I think that the prayer, speaking about prayer, not just pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I would also add, pray for the Jewish people to open their eyes for their Messiah. I mean, they're desperate right now, and desperation sometimes leads to asking the big questions. And uh, I think that this is a good time to tell them that there is hope, and and He is uh, the only one that will ever give them peace. Amen. Give everybody your um, contact info, beholdisrael.org. But what's right. how, how can they uh, see these things that you're going to post? Okay, beholdisrael.org is the website. But uh, if they get the Telegram app, it's a Telegram messenger, they follow, they can find my channel. I've got about 360,000 followers. So don't go on the other Amirs that are fake. <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot of people that are stating yeah. talk to me, but they and um, and go and subscribe, and you can also we'll post it also on Twitter and on on Instagram and 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 also on Facebook. All behold Israel or Amir Salfati, you can find it, and uh, we'll make it available. And uh, yeah, and beholdisrael.org will give you an understanding of obviously who we are and what we do. Great. All right. I'm going to ask you to pray, to close in prayer. And can I ask you to close in prayer in English and then also in Hebrew? Too? Yeah, of course. Both. Yeah. Thank you. So, Lord, we thank you that we can come before you uh, and first acknowledge that you are the king of this universe, that you created everything, that it's all for you. Yes. Lord, we also have uh, hearts that are now broken for your nation, Israel, and for that uh, which this nation has gone through and is going through right now. Lord, we see that people are being slaughtered just for being Jews, just for being those that uh, obeyed your calling to get back to their land and fulfill your prophecy given to the prophet Ezekiel. And so, Father, we ask now that you will provide the comfort and also protect your nation from further attacks. We also pray that throughout this pain and sorrow, you will reveal yourself to the people and maybe cause them to uh, cry loud and clear and ask for uh, the way to be comforted and find real peace and find their Messiah, Yeshua. Yeah. Father, we pray also for America and for uh, we thank uh, the American people that are standing by Israel right now. I pray that uh, 
You will bless this nation for doing that. But I also pray for the safety of the American people in light of what we see that is going on in, in, the, in light of all the growing dangers all around. Uh, Father, I pray that you will uh, continue to work in us and through us uh, to bring people to you. This is our ultimate job in this world. Uh, our home is not here. And we thank you. Avinu sheba shemaim, ani model lecha sheata av arachamim sheata zeshe mamtsi nechama. Ani mbakesh sheata achshav b'shaa kasha azu shel Yisrael. Sheata tenachem, sheata teodad, sheata teamod l'tzad ha'am shelcha, sheata tagen alem v'tishmor alem mikol ra. Toda lecha avinu sheba shemaim sheata gam agen alemu mikol al bekol agvulot misaviv. אם זה לא היה אתה, כבר מזמן הם היו משמידים אותנו. תודה לך, אבא, שאנחנו גם יכולים לפנות אליך, ואני מבקש שאתה ת, תמשיך את העבודה הטובה שאתה התחלת, ואנחנו מבקשים שעם ישראל, דרך כל הצרה הזו שקורית לו, שאולי עוד ועוד אנשים יפנו אליך, ושלא יצטרכו לעבור את הצרה הגדולה, אלא יבינו כבר עכשיו את הצורך במשיח, בשלום של מנו. ובתקווה שיש לנו בו. שוב תודה לך על הכל, בשם ישוע המשיח ולכבודו. אמן. אמן. Thank you, my brother Amir. Sorry, you didn't understand half of my prayer. I got Yeshua, he must share. There you go. God bless you, brother. I love you. Thanks for taking the time. And we're praying for you, for your family, and for all of Israel. Love you, brother. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. God bless. All right, so here's what I'd like to ask us to do as we uh, take some time to pray together corporately. Um, don't anybody feel uncomfortable? You can sit by yourself if you want to, but I'm going to ask if you feel so inclined to try to huddle up with a few people so that you can have like small little group prayers. But again, nobody should feel uncomfortable. If you want to just sit by yourself, just tell people you're fine where you are. And don't anyone feel obligated to have to pray out loud. What I would like is if you huddle up into a small group, like the row in front of you or behind you or down your row, that at least one person says, I'll be willing to pray, okay? At least one, so that not, not everybody feels like you have to pray, okay? Um, And I've got, there are so many different things that we could pray for. I've identified six specific things I'd like us to pray about. And then we're going to close with a special song that we actually sang. Uh, Ben's going to sing it. We actually um, sang it for M Ambassador uh, Dermer when he was here a couple of years ago. And um, Ambassador Dermer is now a special um, counselor to uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. So uh, it was a special song about Israel that we performed for him. And um, it's just a great song about Israel. So before we close with that, let's take time to pray. So take right now about 10 seconds to figure out who you want to huddle up with and just do it quietly and quickly. And again, if you just want to sit there by yourself, you can sit there by yourself, but figure out who you want to huddle up with because we want to come together as a corporate body and just be able to pray together. And then identify at least one person that will be willing to pray for your group. One person who's willing to at least pray out loud in your group. All right. Okay, everybody listen. Listen, listen, listen. This is your first prayer directive, okay? We're going to pray for the comfort of those who have lost loved ones and friends or who have loved ones or friends who have been kidnapped or missing. Okay, so there are now over 1,200 Israelis who have been killed, another 150 who are, who are missing. We have 22 Americans who are dead, who are killed, and 17 who are missing. And so right now, just take like a minute or two and pray for the comfort of people who have lost loved ones. Go.
all right? The next thing I'd like us to pray for is to pray for Hamas, to pray for confusion of their plans, that the Lord would confuse the enemy and that their hearts would search for the true and living God, but mainly that their plans would be confused. All through the Bible, we see how God confuses the enemy. Let's just pray for confusion among Hamas right now. Pray. All right, next, I'd like us to pray against anti-Semitism around the world, including here in the United States, and pray along the same lines that the international community will stand with Israel, especially the United States. We won't waver in our support. So we're gonna pray against anti-Semitism. I read the statistic today that people who have been monitoring internet traffic on social media, anti-Semitism has increased 488% since Saturday. In Sydney, Australia, they were chanting in the opera house, gas the Jews, okay? Anti-Semitism is on the rise because of this. We're gonna pray against anti-Semitism in the world, and we're gonna pray for the international community to continue to stand with Israel, so pray for that. All right. Now I want us to pray for our government leaders. Let's pray for President Biden. Let's pray for 
Prime Minister Netanyahu, asking the Lord to give them clarity and wisdom and thanking the Lord for their leadership during this hour. So pray for our government leaders, both here in the United States and in Israel. Let's lift them up, pray for them. All right, two more things to pray for. I'd like us to pray for protection, protection for the Israeli military. Um, we may also, there's some talk about sending some, at least maybe our special forces to go over to help rescue American hostages. So pray for potentially any of our uh, soldiers that end up going over there or special forces. Um, we're poised to give air support, so we might be engaged in this some, in some way. So let's pray for protection for all those who are fighting. Pray also for the protection of innocent civilians, both, both Israelis and Palestinians who are just gonna be caught in the crosshairs of this war. So pray for protection for soldiers and innocent civilians. Pray now, pray. All right, one last prayer point. One last prayer point and then Ben's gonna sing the song. But as Amir said, can we pray that through all this, many Jews would come to trust Yeshua, Jesus as savior, and many Muslims would come to trust Isa in Arabic, Jesus as Lord and savior. Let the eyes of many Jews and Muslims be open to who Jesus is as Lord and Savior. Pray for that.
Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you all for praying. Let's just be seated for this closing song. Ben's going to sing for us.
close with Psalm 121. This is our prayer. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve you going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Lord, our hope is in you for our own hope and especially tonight for the hope of Israel and the Jewish people. Comfort them, we pray. Protect them, we pray. And may you fight for your people by coming against the evil that has assaulted and attacked them. And we pray these things, Lord, with a heart for you and a heart for the people of Israel. And we pray these things in the matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah. In your name. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a good night.